Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I've managed to get my hands on one of the sexiest drop tops that Lexus has ever produced. Sure, they've had drop tops in the past. I'm talking about the SC430 and the IS250C. However, this thing behind me is the hotly anticipated 2021 LC500 convertible. We've been waiting for Lexus to build this car for the last three years since this flagship coupe came out. Now, of course, there is an embargo on pricing and driving impressions, so you'll have to come back on July 29th at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I'll talk about everything, including the full driving impressions on this gorgeous new drop top. But for this video, I thought I'd give you guys a little sneak peek and talk about all the ins and outs that make the LC convertible unique versus the coupe version. All right, so for any convertible, we have to talk about the booty of this thing, because as you can see, she got a big booty just like the coupe. However, Lexus decided to go with a soft top, a cloth soft, soft top on this car, which I'm actually glad they did. I mean, the old SC430 had a hard top. It just never really looked right. It always looked frumpy from all angles, and it was very complex. It was very heavy. This classic soft top is a much more cleaner approach for me, and I actually don't mind the way this thing looks with the top down. I'm obviously gonna put the top down later, or with the top up, I'll put the top down later, but let me first show you guys a quick walk around so you can see how this car looks in the sunlight. Now, obviously you can see this one here is painted in this beautiful shade of ultra white. It has a black top and it has that beautiful circuit red leather interior. And if you look at the specs of this thing, they're practically identical to the coupe. It still is around 187 inches long overall. It shares the 113 inch long wheelbase. My particular tester here has these really beautiful set of 20, uh, 20 inch wheels in the front, 21 inch wheels in the back. They're staggered 275 widths in the rear with these high performance Brembo brakes. This looks very much identical to the coupe version that I had a couple years ago when the LC first came out and the front fascia hasn't really changed. This thing still turns heads everywhere you take it. I mean, just look at it. It's very low and wide and that's what gives the LC the presence that you know, no other Lexus has really had before it. This is the first vehicle, remember, to ride on the GAL platform, which is the Global Architecture Luxury Platform. And it really is an impressive platform. Now, obviously I can't talk about how this drives, but remember when I drove the LC Coupe, it is the true definition of a luxury GT car, just the right amount of sportiness and luxury. Well, now at the rear, you can see the design is practically the same. You have these really cool tail lights, which have a three-dimensional effect. You have these LED turn signals down here at the bottom. And then the exhaust, we're gonna start up that engine later and you guys are gonna hear that. It is one mean sounding V8 engine. This is the only way you should buy the LC. Now, this is a convertible and the trunk capacity did shrink a little bit. Uh, this has about 3.4 cubic feet of space. The coupe has around 5.5 cubic feet of space. So you lost around two cubic feet. It's still pretty usable. It's a little bit of a shallow trunk. I don't think you could fit a set of golf clubs back here, but that's kind of what the back seats are for. These are, uh, this trunk is useful if you you guys have like two carry-on roller bags they will fit the trunk lid as you can see is actually made of uh, reinforced carbon fiber uh, which is really nice it's the forged carbon carbon fiber it makes the trunk extra light uh, because this car needs that because it actually weighs around 200 pounds more uh, versus the coupe now the one thing I'm pretty disappointed about is I can't open the top from outside the vehicle like some cars if I push and hold like a button on this remote fob it'll actually let me open the top as you can see when you lock unlock the door the door locks will pop open if I push and hold the unlock button, which is what I expected it to to do is open the windows and whatnot. It doesn't do anything like that. So if uh, Lexus does uh, add that feature later, I think it'll be a great addition uh, because you definitely want to be able to open the top from uh, from outside the vehicle. Now stepping inside, I'm going to show you guys the interior in just a moment, but it's pretty freaking hot out here. So let me start up the car first and get the air conditioning running. Oh yeah, that five liter V8 is even more noticeable with the roof down on this car. Now, to open up the roof on this vehicle, Lexus actually hid the button or the control panel in a really great spot. It took me a while to find the actual roof mechanism in this car, because if you look around here, the same touchpad controller here for the infotainment system, the same climate control system over there, of course. Let me turn the air conditioning down, it's a little um, loud. Lexus still gives you a CD, a CD player over here, which you know kind of reminds you that this is going to be built for old people. Same gear selector here. To find the chop mechanism to open that, you have to slide this back, which gives you the same cup holder. And if you open this up, you can see it gives you um, a little bit of storage space. You have to flip this open, and that's where they hid the top mechanism. But once you do that, 
Just push and hold this button down. It's pretty quick, it takes around 15 seconds. Oh yeah. And Lexus says you can do this at speeds up to 30 miles an hour, which is pretty fast. There you go, it's done. And now we've got the sun, the sun in our face and the wind in our hair. So now that I've got the roof down and I'm parked in the shade, let's move on to the interior of this new LC500. As you can see, the circuit red leather, absolutely perfect color combination. Looking at the rest of this interior at a glance, you can see it's practically identical to the last LC500 coupe that I tested. When you shut the door here, the door has a very heavy, solid thunk to it. The structure of this vehicle actually really impresses me. With a lot of convertibles, I expect the cowl to shake a little bit when I go over bumps or if I slam the door, and this thing just feels incredibly solid. It feels like it was built and designed to be a convertible from the start, and that's a very important thing. Lexus has made some updates to the LC on the inside for 2021. Namely, it has to do with that infotainment system. No, it's still not a touchscreen, which is annoying, but what Lexus has finally added, however, is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which Android Auto is actually a new addition uh, for 2021. As you can see here, you have to use this annoying Lexus trackpad here to kind of go through um, the actual infotainment system. It's still annoying to use, but it is a huge improvement over what um, you know, the 2017 and 2018 models were like because I just have Apple CarPlay. And as you can see, like with the GPS here and when you put Waze up in here, it takes up the entire 10.3 inch display. It looks fantastic, it's easy to use. My tester has the upgraded 13 speaker, 950 watt Mark Levinson audio system, which sounds just as good as the higher end Bang & Olufsen sound systems you get in a lot of the competing European models. Lexus also throws in a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, which is nice. The seats adjust in like 14 different ways. They're heated and cooled, I have three person memory memory here. On the driver's side, you have a few more buttons over here uh, for your, your HUDs, your head-up display, uh, your trunk release. You have your power window controls here, which have that typical high-quality Lexus feel to it. Everything in here is kind of wrapped in leather. I mean, you can see the door panel here has some genuine leather, some real aluminum trim, some more beautiful leather uh, on the door panels. And then the leather extends, of course, through the dashboard, over the instrument panel display, over this part of the dashboard, over the glove compartment. As you can see, when you open up the glove compartment there with this little button, it's a little small, but at least Lexus gives you a glove compartment and it is damped and lined with felt. There's two grab handles here on the passenger side to tell your passengers you better hold on because this thing is pretty fast. And you have dual zone climate control here. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see Lexus gives you a backup camera, but no 360 camera. They do give you parking sensors, but I'm surprised that it doesn't take up the entire screen. Toyota and Lexus need to work on the resolution of their backup cameras. It's still kind of very, very much behind compared to a lot of the European brands. I wish that they would get rid of this CD player. It's just a waste of space down here. They could have easily put uh, some heated seat controls actual buttons over here because if you want to access the heated seat controls you have to go into the screen go to climate go to seat and steering which as you can see there i accidentally went a little too far forward and that's why i missed it seat and steering as you can see there cooled seat heated seat heated steering wheel and you can also turn on that headrest warmer uh, which offers three levels. Although I really wish that manufacturers would just start adding a cooled function there. Like with the top down, it would be nice if this thing was blowing cold air over my neck, which would help keep me a little bit cooler. The cooled seat, however, does work really well in this car. Now I should note that when you have it in this split speed, split screen mode, I can have the heated seat control or cooled seat control over there versus, and then the audio on the other side. It's just, as you can see here, it's clunky to use this thing. And Lexus obviously has a new infotainment system coming uh, but this is just the whole biggest letdown of the interior. I'm sure you get used to it, but I just think that there's an easier system. Lexus should just bring the screen out closer, make it a touch screen, which is what they're doing in all their uh, newest, newest products. Uh, this shifter controls the 10 speed automatic transmission. It works kind of like a Prius where you kind of kick it to the left first and push up for reverse, kick it back to the left, pull down for drive, push the P button to put it into park. As you can see, this is where Lexus hid the controls for the tap power top. If you pull this little window switch, it closes both windows, including that little back pocket window, which when you have the top up, by the way, along with that windscreen deflector, it actually stays pretty calm in here. You can have a conversation with the top down at highway speeds and the wind isn't too, isn't too crazy to mess up your hair, which is definitely a good thing. These seats, as you can see, these are the upgraded semi-aniline perforated seats, which are nice. Um, they're comfortable, supportive. They really hold you in place nicely when you're doing some aggressive driving. Lexus also gives you another cup holder here and another cup holder there. Although storage in this car is kind of lacking. If you open this up, it offers a decent amount of storage. 
Um, and then you can kind of close that if you wanted to uh, give yourself the full armrest again. The driving position in this car is pretty good. I can see around very easily, especially when the roof is down. And like other convertibles in this segment, Lexus gives you these teeny tiny pair of back seats, which are pretty useless. I mean, they're there to put stuff, but you actually can fit, um, you know, shorter adults back here. If they're like, I'd say if they're under five foot nine, as long as you can push the front seat forward. Um, Lexus apparently says there's 32 inches of legroom back there. However, with the seat all the way back, you can see it's made for somebody that doesn't have any legs. Now I want to show you guys really quickly what this thing looks like with the roof down. If you thought it looks great with the roof up, holy moly, does it look even better when you put that gorgeous soft top down. As you can see, everywhere I take this thing, it, it tracks so many stairs and it's not just beautiful. People literally freak out when they see that Lexus badge on it because it just doesn't look like a Lexus. Lexus is known for building comfortable, you know, luxurious, high quality luxury cars but they're always so boring. This, as you can see, is anything but boring. Gorgeous, sexy. I think it has the right lines to attract an equal amount of male and female buyers because everywhere I took this thing, I had looks from both men and women equally. And it looks just the best, obviously, with the roof down, especially in this color combination with the ultra white and the circuit red leather, as you can see right there. As you can see underneath the massive hood of the LC500 convertible, Lexus is only offering it with the five liter V8 currently. I don't believe the hybrid is going to be offered on the convertible. They haven't announced that yet. They could offer it, but you don't want the hybrid. You want this. This is the five liter V8, naturally aspirated, of course. It makes 471 horsepower and 389 pound-feet of torque. It moves a roughly 4,600 pound heavy convertible around through a 10-speed automatic. Rear wheel drive is your only option. Um, there is no all-wheel drive, of course. This car does offer an optional limited slip differential, which is gonna be great if you guys actually wanna do some burnouts, do a little bit of track driving in this thing. You can take this car out to a track. Now, fuel economy hasn't been announced for the convertible version yet, but the V8 coupe version is rated at 1625. I imagine the convertible might be one less um, whenever they have final numbers. Premium gas is obviously going to be recommended. Uh, this thing deserves premium gas. If you want to save fuel, obviously get the hybrid version, which gets up to 35 mpg on the highway. So 10 more versus the coupe V8 version of this car. But the V8 is the one you want to get because listen to how the engine sounds. Now the exhaust system on the LC is actually a quad unit, even though you can't really see it because the trim finishers are a dual. But let's fire up the V8 and hear how it sounds. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah, that's why you want to get the five liter V8 in this car. Definitely sounds better than the hybrid. So obviously I'm super looking forward to actually taking this thing out on the road, but as I mentioned, there is an embargo on driving impressions and pricing until July 29th. So make sure you come back on that day at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll have another video uploaded where we'll put the top down. We'll drive it with the top up, with the top down. We'll listen to the way that V8 sounds as it goes through the gears. This is one beautiful car. And as you can see with the roof down in this white color, it seriously is going to attract a lot of stairs in a good way, in a way that the SC430 and the IS250C just couldn't manage because they just looked incredibly frumpy. Now, obviously there's no pricing on this car yet, but the coupe version starts at around $92,000. I'm gonna say this one's at least five grand more. So once, whenever Lexus gives us the full pricing on this car, I'll be sure to mention that in the upcoming video that I'll upload on July 29th at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this first look video on the 2020 one Lexus LC500 convertible. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.